In the mid-1800s, after slavery ended in Georgia, a young man by the name of Jim Denard fled the plantations of Houston County and moved to what seemed to be a great distance at the time, Twiggs County. He was excited to be free and determined to start a family of his own. Jim met a young woman by the name of Amanda Whitehead. The two settled and had children. It's been said that after Jim and Amanda began raising their kids, Jim killed the man and left the entire family while moving back to Houston County. Amanda raised the children well. One of the sons, Mac Denard, carried out the tradition of farming and gardening for a way of living. He then got married and became a preacher. He and his wife had several kids. One of their names was David. David Denard was born near the turn of the century. He learned farming and also earned a decent living with it. He married Bella Felicia Green, and he and his wife had children. David made decent money and was smart spending it. When the Great Depression hit, people thought he was crazy, but he bought up hundreds of acres of land in Twiggs County because it was being sold for such low prices. To help make more money, he used all of his kids to farm the land. One of their names was Zeddy Denard. Zeddy joined the U.S. military as soon as he was old enough. He met Annie Kate Denson before leaving to serve his country. They would marry and have four children together. Zeddy Jr., Marvin, Dorothy, and finally, Herbert. And with Herbert Denard, things would never be the same. When Herbert was around eight years old, his parents had a huge fight. This would end their marriage. Zeddy left Georgia immediately and settled with some relatives in Buffalo, New York. He would later send word to Georgia of his whereabouts. Shortly after, Annie Kay complained that it was hard for her to work and take care of all the kids. Initially, Zeddy sent for Zeddy Jr. and Herbert, but eventually they all would move to New York. After a few years, Dorothy returned to live with her mother in Macon. She then had two additional sisters, Gwendolyn and Karen. Zeddy remarried a woman by the name of Roberta Valentine in Buffalo. She would raise the boys like they were her very own. It's been said that Herbert got into lots of mischief in New York, but eventually his time came to leave after his brother Marvin and his father had a disagreement. Marvin was put out. When I was home, uh, uh, I lived at someplace else, but uh, I used to come back home a lot. Somehow, Marvin found his way back in each night. This angered Zeddy. The only way he could see Marvin getting back in was by Herbert letting him in. And, I, and my father had told Herbert about uh, who, uh, how did I get in the house? And he couldn't find out how I come in the house. He said, told him not to be there when he get back. So he put Herbert out. <laughs> and then Herbert left. <laughs> so I. So he went and joined the Marine Corps. Herbert moved in with a buddy that he went to high school with. But after a few months, he felt uncomfortable. So he enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. Even though he wasn't too, he, he acted like he was down in Washington, D.C., uh, but he was still uh, 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 visiting Jackie Kennedy. He was the president's wife at the time, and he was saying he's down there with Jackie. He didn't tell anyone where he was. Over the years, Herbert has spoken very little about his experiences in the Marines, only emphasizing his displeasure with the whole concept. He said that while being shipped off to Hawaii, he watched Hosea Williams and John Lewis and other blacks being hosed down and having police dogs sicked on them as they held peaceful demonstrations. This angered Herbert and strengthened his determination to get more educated in his rights and involved in the struggle. In the midst of the war, Herbert's grandmother, Susie Denson, passed. Herbert saw this to be a great excuse to get from over there and come home. He had his mother call and say that his grandmother had raised him so he could be excused to come home. While in Georgia, his father called from Buffalo and told Herbert to be sure he stopped to visit his uncles. Herbert stopped into the gas station, Food Mart, being run by his uncle Benny. While there, he met the cashier, the beautiful Burdine Dillard. We met in uh, 1965. I graduated in 1964. So this was the year after I graduated. Uh, I was 
work and play his uncle, DJ, working at a little service station. I was like cashier. And uh, Herbert came home uh, from the service. He came to his grandmother's uh, funeral because his grandmother died uh, in 65. And uh, so uh, he came up to visit his uncle, and uh, I was there. And uh, he, he, he was uh, a very handsome man with a uh, hat on his Marine uniform. <laughs> he was kind of suave and devilish. After returning to Vietnam, Herbert and Burdine kept in touch by letters and phone calls. A year later, they were married. Herbert and Burdine were married in November of 1966. After returning from the service, Herbert and Burdine settled in Macon. Herbert and Burdine soon began having children. First a daughter, Deborah, and shortly after a son, Herbert Jr., and eventually Kenneth. Herbert then began his career at Southern Railway. He also began working closely with the community. In the late 70s, he opened up Fort Hawkins School and turned it into a summer school program for inner city kids. He named it the Medgar, Malcolm, and Martin Educational Center. He then got government funds and opened a daycare in Kings Park, even sending his youngest son. In those early years, he was out there all the time. And he was into it with, uh, I remember when uh, Ronnie, the mayor, Ronnie Thompson, was here. And, and uh, Herbert and, and the mayor was into it all the time. And they was, uh, I remember when uh, the phone was in his name. We had to take our phone out of uh, his name and put it in my name because the people was calling, threatening, said they were going to burn our house down. And they was uh, always on the phone, and he was always in it with somebody. So uh, then we just took the phone and put it in my name. And since I was always in the background, people didn't even know my name. So, And uh, that's been for, I guess, over uh, 35 years. As the 80s began, so did Herbert's interest in politics. He was persuaded to run for office at the Macon Water and Sewage Authority. He ran and won. This time around, Herbert wrote monthly columns for the Macon Metro Times. After its publisher refused to run certain articles because of Herbert's militancy, Herbert decided to start his own newspaper. Thus, the Georgia Informer was born. He began the paper as a vehicle to spread his views and give notoriety to unsung heroes in the black community. Although starting small, running the paper out of a room in his house, he would eventually move downtown Macon, hire help, and make good profits off advertisements. He would eventually use his family to run most of it. After watching his father's younger brother, Tony, and a local preacher, the Reverend Joe Hill, success with gospel recordings in Georgia, Herbert also began recording local talent. He started his own label, Xavier Records, named after his youngest son, Kenneth Xavier Denard, who he had helped name. He used the Georgia Informer as a vehicle to cross-promote his projects. In 1997, Herbert ran for county commissioner of Bibb County. He would lose to Sam Hartland, and this would have him decide to end his career in politics and focus on running the paper. Shortly after, Jack Ellis became mayor of Macon, and his seat was open for the Access TV show, Community Forum. Denard would step in and create his own show, titled The Herbert Denard Show. This would become another outlet for blacks to spread their views and spotlight their business ventures. Over the years, Herbert Denard has done a lot for the Middle Georgia community. He has been in the news and papers for good things as well as bad, but his heart has always been in the right place. His heart has mostly been for the underdog, the black working class. The Denard blood runs through his veins. In the spirit of Jim, Mac, David, and Zeddy, Herbert has found success while staying well grounded. And for this, we honor him on his 60th birthday. Happy 60th birthday. Tell me, he ain't having no birthday on more than my anniversary. <laughs> uh, but we wish him a, 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 a happy birthday and may God bless him. And he have many more happy birthday. Maybe he can get his 
oldest is the father. He has 85 years old, almost 86. I said, maybe he can, he can come up here and get his father. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, my baby brother. Happy birthday to you. Herbert L., I wish you many, many more from the Robinson family. Happy birthday, Mr. Reno. Happy birthday, Uncle Herbert. Happy birthday to my sweet brother-in-law, Herbert. <laughs> and please have many more. <laughs>